Good morning. Good morning. Good morning. And welcome to church on such a beautiful Sunday morning. Amen. I'm surprised to see this many folks here with deer season up here. <laughs> <laughs> this one up here. That's right. He just never did. <laughs> so we the only announcements that, that we have is Anna wants to talk first, and then Linda wants to talk. Anna? Um, mine is real short. I just want to let everybody know that we have 59 boxes so far. Awesome. And next Sunday is the last Sunday to receive them, and we'll pack up my car after church. Uh, there is boxes back there, labels should anybody want them. Thank you. Okay, three things this morning. I want to give you all opportunities. Uh, we talk about not being able to do, th you know, you talk about mission work and you wish you could do more for others. What well, we're giving you the opportunity to do. Um, she talked about the shoe boxes. We have Christmas baskets that we'll be doing for the Weimar Food Pantry. There's a box in the back. Uh, bring any non-perishable items. Um, and we'll take money also. And then third, this is a kind of a paid non-political announcement. I want to make y'all all aware of the Taste of Columbus is this afternoon. This is a boys and girls project. Uh, several of our members are quite active. And if you're not aware, um, the law enforcement in Houston, in Houston, in Weimar, says the Boys and Girls Club are a really good deterrent to uh, gangs. And that's why Weimar has a good crop of kids. So this is their big fundraiser. Um, you get all the food and drink you can eat on the Columbus Courthouse Squares starts at 3 o'clock. Get there early. At, you get all you can eat and drink, wine and beer. So uh, we hope we'll see you there. Last thing, I want to remind all the ladies of the church, we're going to meet at 945 this Thursday for Brookwood. We hope the ladies will join us. Dokey, the other thing on here they're not going to have the men's breakfast on Saturday, November the 13th. It's going to be on the 20th instead. On the 20th? Yeah. Okay. And then we have a birthday. She ain't been here in a long time. <laughs> you can't even sit over here. <laughs> and we have an anniversaries coming this next week. Other than that, it's the preacher's sermon. All right. Good morning. Good morning. I'm Ben right. Schengenberg. I used to be the minute. No. It's been, been three weeks. I miss, I miss it when I'm not here, so I'm glad to be back with you. Uh, we're going to do prayer concerns, and I always like to do that up front. So I want you to keep in your prayers Christopher Marino, who's having a real bad asthma attack right now. So keep him in your prayers that that might pass quickly. Dale Harston had a knee worked on, and I guess home, and somebody said he's acting like a typical man. I don't know what that means. <laughs> <laughs> keep him in your prayers and see where his every covers. Uh, Ronnie Pittman. Pretty the, the uh, Parkinson's and all the stuff he's dealing with. He's lost his eyesight now completely, so keep him in. We've got to be a really tough time for the Pittmans. Uh, also, Rosie Shamara is there at uh, Regency. Keep her in your prayers. I think she's doing really well, and hopefully we'll be able to come home uh, very soon. Nola Moore got a really good uh, uh, announcement about her chemo is working and doing going the right direction, so celebrate with her. <coughs> we have three opportunities for some really good music in the next week. Uh, Next Sunday here in worship, we always have a music Sunday, so if you want able to play something, thank you, Jane, for doing that for us. Uh, he's going to be available to play for us if others of you. In fact, uh, uh, our organist said she'll provide some inspiration by way of a music piece, a musical piece that she likes, and so uh, uh, she's going to do that. But if you have music, just, just tell me following worship so we can get you on tap. Uh, I think Jerry Braun did that last time we did something, and it was a very moving experience to say, this is important to me, and this is why. So uh, please get, take advantage of that. Also next Sunday is um, uh, Divine Testament. It's a musical, uh, a Christian singing group that played, that's at the winery. They call it Gospel Brunch at the winery, and it's from noon until 3. I think you just have to go there and get your tickets. But uh, that'll be a good time of inspiration. December the 4th, uh, Kissed by Grace is a musical group that is going to be performing at the Faith Lutheran Church, and they have invited you to, to be a part of that. There are brochures up in, in the uh, fellowship hall if you need to know more information about that. Um, 
Sandy Freud said, I asked him how his job was doing. He said, it's really good. And I went, you want to celebrate with that because that was a real tense time and it's turned out so well. He's really happy with what he's doing there. Are there any other announcements or concerns that you have? Anybody you want us to pray for? Fellowship, in the hall. fellowship is taking place in the, the uh, fellowship hall for the first time in a long time today. So after church today, please go over there. I think they said there's pigs <laughs> over there. They're not talking about men again. Are they? <laughs> uh, there's some pigs you can eat. Uh, go, go take advantage of that fellowship time as, as soon as worship is over. Any other announcements? If not, back to you. If y'all would all rise and we'll open our service with the morning hymn number 439. <laughs> today, but she had an emergency with the family, and so uh, she couldn't be here. Uh, keep her in your prayers. The family's struggling with some issues that, they, that really need your prayers. So just pray for the family right now that they might be able to resolve this in a good way. And as soon as we get Francis back here, we're going to say yes and yes and uh, receive her into full membership of the church. Caroline, how are you? Good. You go to your one? It's a guy thing, isn't it? Uh, no. <laughs> no. That's right. I got a granddaughter that I hunted with her. She reminded me of that. When you, uh, you know what this is? Where, where do you see it? Where, where do you see a belt and you go, uh oh. It's not just when your daddy's putting on his pants, but if he pulls off a belt, says, come here, young lady, what, what's the problem? 
You're in big trouble. In fact, you probably did something really wrong. Yeah. Come here, young lady. Oh, did you? I'm not going to ask I have. Let me just tell you, I've been, been spanked a few times. And it's, it's out of love they do that because they, you know, they really need to correct us and get us on our way again. But I also brought something that's not so ugly like M&Ms. Now, what do you think of when you get do something good, do you get rewards? M&M's is one of my favorites. What, what's some of your favorite? What, what do they do? Do they say thank you or give you something nice or give you something nice? Yeah, that's really cool. When, they, when you know you've done something good, you've done it the right way, and they pat you on the back and say, way to go. That's what teachers do when they give you A's, saying way to go, that's good. Uh, that's what ribbons are for when you win the, the, the tournament or something, you get a ribbon or a medal, and they say, way to go. So there's all these things that we do that we get rewards for, and there's some things that we do that you get really bad trouble and spanking and it hurts and all that bad stuff. Uh, the reason I'm bringing all this stuff up is because we're to be talking about a scripture today that says we do all kinds of bad stuff, even when we don't want to, even preachers do stuff, even though I try not to do bad stuff, sometimes I do bad stuff anyway. And when I think about God, I'm thinking God's up there going, boy, come here. And that's not a good feeling. I'm thinking if God's mad at me, I'm in big trouble. But the good news from the scripture today is, uh, from Hebrews, it says, Jesus knew we were going to get in all that trouble. And he knew we were going to have all kinds of problems. And we knew that even though we tried really hard, we were going to still get in trouble. He said, so I'm going to go to the cross for you. Which means that when you get to, to, to God looking at you, instead of seeing, you did this wrong, young lady, he sees, oh, you're perfect. Because <coughs> Jesus took care of all that. Jesus made it perfect. That's huge when you think, you mean God's not mad at me? God's never mad at you. God loves you and wants the very best for you. And I think that makes a whole lot of difference in the way we live if we think, oh, God's really pulling for me all the time. I just want you to get that through your head today. If there's a God that we have who never, never dwells on your shortcomings and the bad things you do because of Jesus, he sees beauty. In fact, somebody put it well. They said, it, it's like God has your picture on his refrigerator. You, you know, it's, my, oh, you, does your grandmother have those kind of things? Like, my, put my picture on the refrigerator because we're so precious to us. That's the way God is with us. And if you think about God loving us like that, it makes you live and makes you love and be more, more generous and helpful to people because you're, most, you know, you're so loved. Let's pray. Thank you, Lord, for loving us. Thank you for Jesus, which takes away the sins of the world and allows us to live abundantly. Make that happen for us this day. In the name of Jesus. Amen. I've got some reward for you for coming forward. Good deal. Thank you. Next hymn is number 21, Love Blind, All Love Myself.
sins with a true heart, God will be faithful to forgive your sins and cleanse you from all unrighteousness. So if you confess your sins honestly this day, the good news is your sins are indeed forgiven. Thanks be to God. Amen. Join me as we profess our faith. I believe in God, the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, and in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, dead, and buried. He is ascended into hell. The third day he rose again from the dead. He ascended into heaven and sitteth on the right hand of God, the Father Almighty. From thence he shall come to judge the quick and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Christian Church, the communion of the saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. You may be seated. A fairly long reading for the book of Hebrews, but uh, I'm going to select portions. I'm going to start with... Uh, verse 11, but I'm going to skip a little portion in between, but you get the idea. Uh, in, in Hebrews, as Paul's letter to the Hebrews, he's really trying to explain the idea of what does it mean that Christ has died for us? And he's saying, you understand it like the old church, the, 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 the old priest who did communion and they put blood on stuff and then they had to do it again and again. He said, but Jesus is a whole new thing. Christ has already come as a high priest of the good things that are already here. The tent in which he serves is greater and more perfect. It is not a tent made by human hands. That is, it is not part of the created world. When Christ went through this tent, he entered once and for all into the most holy place. He did not take the blood of goats and bulls to offer as a sacrifice. Rather, he took his own blood and obtained eternal salvation for us. The blood of goats and bulls and the ashes of burnt calves are sprinkled on the people who are ritually unclean, and this purifies them by taking away their ritual impurity. Since this is true, how much more is accomplished by the blood of Christ? Through the eternal spirit, he offered himself as a perfect sacrifice to God. His blood will purify our consciences and useful rituals so that we may serve the living God. Skipping to verse 24. Those things which are copies of the heavenly originals had to be purified by the law. But the heavenly things themselves require much better sacrifices. For Christ did not go into a holy place made by human hands, which was a copy of the real one. He went into heaven itself, where he now appears on our behalf in the presence of God. The Jewish high priest goes into the most holy places every year with the blood of an animal. But Christ did not go in to offer blood of an animal. He offered himself many times. For then, who would have to suffer many times when he created the world? Instead, now when all ages of time are nearing the end, he has appeared once and for all to remove sin through the sacrifice of himself. May God add blessings to the reading and the hearing of this his holy word for us. Amen. Pray with me. Speak to our hearts, O oh God. Use the words of Scripture. Use that still small voice of your spirit. Speak to us what you know we need to hear. May the words of my mouth and the meditations of each of our hearts be good in your sight. Make that possible by the work of your spirit. We ask it in the name of Jesus, who is our rock and our redeemer. Amen. I thought he was going to be here next Sunday, so I said, we need to sing something in church, and we've been listening on the radio, and one of my favorite new songs on the radio is Scars in Heaven. Wonderful song. I, I said, wait, wait, we ought to do Scars in Heaven. So we started practicing, and I realized that the song falls a little short of what I wanted to say. 
what, what it says is absolutely true. It's gospel truth. It's wonderful good news. It's, it's about a, a guy who says uh, he lost a friend of his. And he said, man, I wish I'd have spent more time with him. I, I wish I'd have not goofed off and gone to visit but he died. And now he's in heaven. He said, but what gives me real joy right now is knowing that when he gets to heaven, that there are no scars there. In fact, uh, he, 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 the words, he writes these words. He says, the only scars in heaven, they won't belong to me and you. There'll be no more such thing as broken. The old will be made new. And the thought that makes me smile now, even as the tears fall down, is that the only scars in heaven are in the hands that hold you now. That is gospel truth. That's exactly right. We believe when you get to heaven that God just says, if you believe in Jesus, God, all that's taken care of. You're perfect. The only scars, and we're talking about not just physical scars, but the, the deep, emotional, and uh, spiritual scars that we have, are taken away. And you're perfect. And I, I just love that thought. Uh, being in perfect bliss. And when God looks at you, he just sees nothing but perfection. The reason I didn't want to choose that, that to sing that song is I thought, that's only half the story. What about now? And I think that's what the, uh, the reading from Hebrews is getting at right now. Is, is saying, it's not just about the sweet by and by. That's great if you believe in that, sweet by and by. Good, someday we're going to all be perfect, but it's just tough right now. But the, the gospel, the, the good news from Hebrews is... Uh, Jesus did that so that your sins and your scars could be taken away even now. And if you don't think that makes a difference, uh, just go look at people's lives. Look at your own life. What happens when you believe that God's looking down at you and going, I saw what you did. I know what you thought. You're a, you're a lowdown. You know, if you start thinking that about yourself, oh, no, I just... God, God knows all my, God does know all my thoughts. I had a, a 50th class reunion this past week, and uh, it was really blissful for me. It was eye-opening because, you know, you are when you graduate from high school, uh, and you know, you know the people that are going to succeed, and they're going to take off and fly. And you know that there's some other ones that they're not going to, in fact, I don't know if they're going to live at all because they're just not going the right route. That's what you think when you, get, when you graduate from high school. When you get back from the 50th reunion, you went, oh, they all made it. They all did just fine. They chose different paths, but it didn't matter which path you chose, there was a lot of pain and suffering, and there was a lot of celebration along that path, but they all got there, and everybody did just fine. And maybe you think, maybe some of the people who didn't choose to, to really push hard and make lots of money, maybe even found a little more. Could be, in some cases, they found more joy. It, it, all that starts to begin to be abundantly clear that everybody seems to be okay, that God somehow provides for even the folks you didn't think were going to be able to, to live. And, and we're all okay. And that's the, that's the good news of the Scripture, is that God is with us all. Some of, have, some of us have great intellect, and some of us have great abilities to make money, and some of us have uh, great compassion, but it doesn't matter what your gifts are, that God gets us all through it in some way. <coughs> Would that make a difference if you'd have known that when you graduated from high school? Am I going to be all right? Do I need to? I think I need to study hard. I think I need to spend more time. I need to, I need to excel. I need to. I think it'd make a huge difference if you thought, no, God's got me in the palm of his hand. I need to work, I need to study, I need to do the things I need to do, but I don't need to punish myself and hurt myself and worry about myself so much that I take away the joy. That's why we sang this uh, song, Lost in Love, uh, the Love Divine, All Love Excelling. I love the last line of that that says, Lost in Wonder love and praise. Don't you think that's what would happen if you could say, God's got me in the palm of his hand. God has promised to stay with me. God has promised to take away the sins and get me through this life. 
and work in all things for good. <clears throat> I'm thinking if we really believed that, we would be generous and loving and full of uh, emotion as you look around and just think the incredible beauty and the wonderful things that happen you think might, might be lost in wonder, love, and praise. I, I wish that I had that in, instinct, that inside track, that uh, ability to know a God that loves me like that way back then, because I think it makes all the difference in the world. A uh, couple of stories about that. Um, yeah, I wrote this in the, the newsletter, by the way, but in the uh, church website, Devotion. My, my hunch is that unless Dale reads it for you, you don't read that. So, but if you want to, if you want to check this out, it's on the website. Uh, it's about a guy who, at the age of 23, became a millionaire. He was incredibly gifted. Uh, by the age of 45, 50, something like that, became the first billionaire. And by the age of 53, he was just racked. His body was just a mess. Uh, he, he, he couldn't eat. Uh, all bread and water is about all that he could. Crackers and water, I think, is all he could get down. Uh, his doctor, his own personal doctor, which he could afford because he's a billionaire, said, I don't think you're going to make it another year. 53. He was a mess. He said, I think you better get your affairs in order. The guy had a dream that night, and he dreamt that something about, you can't take all this stuff that you gained with you. Well, maybe you ought to do, to do something to start giving it away. So when he woke up the next morning, he called all of his, his uh, CPAs and his, his agents in and got all of his tax people in there and sat down and said, look, here's what I want to do with all these billions of dollars. I want to set up a foundation that's going to start doing research and helping people. Now I'm going to start giving it away. And he started doing that. In fact, that foundation helped develop some of the uh, vaccines for, uh, for polio, for penicillin, uh, to help develop the penicillin, malaria, diphtheria, tuberculosis. Amazing things were done with that. And he started being generous and giving money away to all over the place. The guy's name is J.D. Rockefeller. You know the name. <coughs> but amazing things started happening to him because he started doing that. Instead of dying at 54, he lived to be 98 because he started learning compassion and learning uh, giving away and, and thinking about others instead of himself. His whole body just changed because of that. When Christ said he wanted us to have abundant life, I think that's what he's talking about. For, for us to learn to be people who are not so worried about keeping everything for ourselves and looking out for ourselves and, and wondering if we're going to make it through okay, to say, look, you, you're okay. You're going to be okay. And I'm going to be able to grant you my presence in you. The best thing you could do with it is to be lost in wonder, love, and praise. To start giving it away. To start being generous to one another. Uh, I love a story that I read about a, a guy who uh, walked into a convenience store. And the uh, owner of the convenience store was obviously staring at something out the window that he was just engrossed with. And he finally kind of knocked on the counter and said, uh, he said, no, wait, wait just a minute. He said, said, look. And he pointed down the street to this guy. He said, see that lady over there <coughs> on, on the park bench? She comes every day and sits there for two hours and, and knits or reads or does something. And every day for like two years she's been there. I finally went over there last week and I, uh, I asked her, why do you come here? She said, oh, two years ago I put my son on a bus here and sent him away for, to school. And uh, I've heard that he's gotten married, and I've heard that I've got a granddaughter, but I haven't seen them. But he says that when he gets enough money, he's going to come see me, and I'm just hoping every day that today is today. Meanwhile, I just knit things for the baby and try to prepare myself for that day that might come. He said, oh, that's, that's really touching. He said, he said, today is the day. And the bus was pulling up as they were talking. And, uh, family got off the bus and her face was just a glow and she gave him a long hug. She met her daughter-in-law for the first time and gave her a great big hug and then they showed her the baby and he said, wow, 
She was just in heaven. He said, I'll never forget the look on her face. I'll never forget that. Oh, paid for the groceries and off he went. The next day, that guy came back in that convenience store and said, you sent in the, the money for the ticket, didn't you? He said, yeah, I did. And I'll never forget the look on her face. That store owner knows a little bit about what abundant life means. You ever felt like that? Like you've done something that just filled somebody else's life to overflowing? That's just as good as it gets. And that's what I think Christ wants for us. Not just someday in the sweet by and by. Right now, right here, for somebody to call us generous or thoughtful or See God's presence in you. Isn't that about as good as it gets? Wouldn't you love to be living abundantly like that? So God's going to help me sing a song that fits the occasion a little better.
so that we can follow you and know a Savior. You created us to know that you hold us and love us and work for our good in all things. Open our eyes and our hearts so that we can understand that and begin to live like people who are loved. Fill us with joy and wonder and love and praise and compassion. Fill us with the opportunities to, to do for others and have our cups filled to overflowing with us. You know, the things for which we would love to lay down our burdens. You know, the things that we carry around that are ancient, and we're still packing them around, still not feeling like we're forgiven. Help us, Lord, to lay down our burdens, to walk freely with you, and no abundant living. Lord, we pray for the people we've listed during our prayer concerns times, for those that are struggling with medical conditions. Hear our prayers. Offer your healing touch. For those with really good news, we thank you from the bottom of our hearts for your rich compassion. For the prayers that are too deep for us to even put into words are for the people that we name silently. Hear our prayers now. Thank you, Lord, for hearing our prayers and for responding in your mercy. Bless us. In the name of Jesus. Amen.
insert that we follow for the communion service if you don't have it available. Enjoy me. When we feel a spiritual hunger, the Lord says, come to my table. If we have a spiritual thirst, the table of the Lord holds satisfaction. There is no other place as holy as the open table to which we are invited. So let us come in thanks to him. To you, mighty God, wonderful healer, we give praise. Our needs are many, for we allow the ways of the world to tempt us. But your way is the right way. Your path chosen for us are the right paths for lives of holiness. Our Lord Jesus, on the night in which he was betrayed, took bread and broke it and gave it to his disciples, saying, This is my body now, broken for you. Do this every time you remember me. In the same way also he took the cup, saying, This cup is now the new covenant in my blood, poured out for you so that all your sins might be forgiven. Take this in remembrance of me. Every time we eat the bread and drink the cup, we remember the Lord Jesus Christ and his powerful presence in our lives. So come to the table of the Lord. Come from the north and the south and the east and the west and gather at this table and be redeemed. Would you prepare your hearts with me as we pray together the Lord's Prayer? Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from the evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory. You may be seated. You will be ushered to the rail if you choose to do that. So uh, we've got a few, uh, maybe a dozen at a time will come forward. Uh, we do serve bread. We do also have uh, uh, gluten-free bread if you choose to do that. Uh, and the cup is juice, so please take those elements. If you prefer to stay in your pew, just as soon as we get through with the service, if you'll just raise your hand, we'll bring it to you in the pew. Come to the table of the Lord. Come now. This is for you.
Would you pray with me the prayer of thanksgiving? All honor, glory, and praise to you, dear God. May our lives be one of gratitude as we are thankful always for your grace and mercy. As we are nourished, we are made strong through the word, the sons, and the kingdom. Amen. If you're able to stand, please do as we sing our closing hymn, Since Jesus Came Into My Heart. 639. seconds on a bull named Fu Manchu and I loved deeper and I spoke sweeter and I granted forgiveness I've been denying. I hope someday you get a chance like me to live like you were dying. That's what I'd like for you too, to live like that. Someday we have promise of eternal glory but you ought to live like you know that that's happening for you right now. You live like it. The peace of God which passes all understanding go with you in the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Thank you.